Ken Henry, let's start with you as the Treasury triage nurse assessing the immediate fiscal and economic demands for the budget. What would they be? And one year through the election cycle, is this May budget the time when Treasurer Jim Chalmers has to open the debate about the need for radical change, which goes to voters at the next election? The starting point fiscal position is a budget deficit of $44 billion, 1.8% of gross domestic product, and that by then we'll be sitting on more than $1,000 billion of public debt. The question that the government has before it is how much of that it should achieve through action on spending and how much of that it should achieve on the revenue side of the budget. But if the Reserve Bank is telling us that the economy is so strong that it should engage in the tightest, in the most accelerated tightening of monetary policy in 30 years, then there is clearly a need for a medium term fiscal strategy to be articulated. So that's going to have to be done in this budget. Treasurer Chalmers is going to have to tell us what the medium term fiscal strategy is, and that means he's going to have to tell us what he thinks an appropriate level of public debt is for the nation to carry. Um, and at what point he expects the budget to get back into balance and how much of the action is going to come on the spending side of the budget and how much on the revenue side of the budget. And that conversation, which you can only really begin in this budget, but it has to begin in earnest. You gave a significant speech last week where you were saying that the demands of spending on things like an ageing population and defence means that really we've got to address the fact that this time round when we're talking about tax reform, we're talking about increased tax. We're not talking about you know, uh, cutting uh, tax, lower taxes. Essentially, we can't really, really in the size of, of government spending that much. We have to increase taxes. Yeah, that's right. We've been kidding ourselves and we've been kidding. We know for how long we've been kidding ourselves. Spending has been out of control, certainly over the last 10 years. And at the same time, the growth rate of the economy, at least in GDP per capita terms and in terms of productivity, is as bad as at any time in our history, uh, apart from in the middle of the recession of the early 1980s and the recession of the early 1990s. So how much uh, do we need to have, how much extra tax do we need to have at the moment and how much more tax would we need each year to start to close the budget deficit? Okay, so the budget deficit um, before the Expenditure Review Committee and the Revenue Committee of Cabinet get to their work uh, to frame the dimensions of this next budget. That budget deficit, as I said, starts at 1.8 per cent of GDP or $44 billion. Roughly, uh, we're talking about um, a fairly immediate or close to immediate um, increase in revenue of the order of $50 billion a year. Well, as you say, we haven't had that growth and you've observed that some of the measures that have been controversial of, uh, in recent times would barely scratch the surface of what you're talking about. But I'd ask what your reflections are on the super changes that were announced recently and also on what the government should do about the stage three tax cuts. Yeah, as far as the superannuation changes are concerned, those that are being proposed that would raise something of the order of $2 billion, Clearly that is uh, a drop in the bucket compared to the 50 billion at least that needs to be raised in additional revenue in short order. And it's quite remarkable, at least it's remarkable to me that there's been so much debate over such what is really such a small measure. We're going to need many measures of that sort if this is how we're going to address the problem by incremental change here and incremental there, change there and so on, we're going to need 20 or 30 such measures in order to address uh, the fiscal challenge that we confront. It seems to me that that particular change that's being recommended does not offend in any way the policy objectives of superannuation. We're not really talking though about superannuation balances that have been accumulated out of the superannuation guarantee. That's not what this tax increase is going to attack, not in the main anyway. What this tax increase is going to affect is larger voluntary savings that people have managed to park in a tax preferred savings vehicle 
called superannuation. Look, we said in the tax review published 12 years ago that Australia has to learn how to place less reliance on personal income tax as a source of revenue and more reliance on other revenue bases that do less economic damage. The particular problem that we confront right now, in my view, in placing too much reliance on the personal income tax system is the intergenerational inequity that it sets up. The people who are paying personal income tax are, of course, in the main, people who are working. In the main, it's labour income that gets fully taxed under the personal income tax system. Those who are retired, living on tax-free superannuation pensions, or living on the age pension for that matter, they're not paying the personal income tax system. Of course, some of them are, but they're, they're paying reduced rates under the personal income tax system. Uh, we have to learn to be able to live with a tax system that generates more revenue from more reliable bases that are more equitable, particularly for younger people, and which do less damage to the economy's growth prospects. Based on that, does that suggest you think that the tax, stage three tax cuts should go ahead, but there needs to be more taxation of people in retirement in superannuation? Well, the stage three tax cuts don't necessarily, of course, have to go ahead in the form that they're in. The comment I was making was about the relative reliance that we place on personal income tax. And what about the stage three tax cuts? No, I wouldn't change them. Oh, no. uh, but I could understand if the parliament decided that um, it might be appropriate to provide lesser benefit to the higher income earners under those uh, stage three tax cuts. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'd leave them as they are. They've already been legislated. They are consistent in their framing with what we recommended in our tax review published 12 years ago. It's not in the personal income tax system where the effort has to be made. It's in the other components of the tax system where the effort has to be made to raise more revenue. Well, you've talked last week about the need for reforming a whole range of other taxes, as you did in the Henry Tax Review 12 years ago. Taxation of transport, savings, mining taxes. As a nation uh, that uh, has such a peculiar reliance upon the export of natural resources, mineral resources in particular, I still find it quite extraordinary that we have not been able to figure out how to extract more revenue from that particular source. It just uh, defies understanding. So many things to talk about, Ken Henry. Thanks for your time tonight. Pleasure.